I'm Dan Edmonds, and this is a 2020 Acura NSX. I used to tune suspensions for a living, but I never got a chance to work on something quite like this. So I'm really excited to get this in the back, take the wheels off, and see what's going on underneath there. But before I get started, remember to click subscribe. Did I mention it's a hybrid? Wow, check that out. There's some great looking stuff behind this big uh, caliper and rotor. Let's move in closer and have a look. I've turned the wheel so we can see the whole thing a little bit better. Right away we can see a really nice looking forged aluminum upper arm, but look how interesting the mounting points are. These are called tie bars or dog bones, and this goes through the bushing and you bolt it to the chassis uh, on either side, and both of them have it here. And then of course this is a low mount in wheel ball joint, so the wheel is going to cover this. and. Uh, they chose that configuration instead of a high mount upper arm because they're trying to keep the hood line nice and low. Here's the front stabilizer bar and you can see that it mounts midway along the upper arm which is unusual. That's a nod to just packaging. They've got a lot of stuff going on here. These shocks are electronically adjustable and they're adjustable in a really unique way. They're called magnetorheological shock absorbers and that refers to the fluid itself inside which is variable in terms of its viscosity based on the amount of electrical current you apply to the coils. The device here is a suspension position sensor which monitors the height and the speed of the movement of the suspension and along with other sensors, steering angle sensor, various G sensors, a computer decides how to make adjustments to the magnetorheological dampers. Here's the coil over shock absorber and the mount is really interesting there. We'll actually take a closer look at that by opening the hood, but you can actually see some daylight in there. The sideways mounting allows it to maintain a very low profile, which was important for the hood line they wanted. It's not just a matter of those two bolts. There's also some dowel pins that are built into it that we can't see that allow it to be quite strong even though it looks like a simple single shear mount. Down here at the bottom it's a little hard to see what's going on. They call it a double wishbone with dual lower pivots which means there's going to be two links down here instead of an A-shaped arm. So I'm going to take that plastic guard off so we can see a little bit better and uh, yeah just a minute while I get out my 10 millimeter wrench. This is the air duct. I've removed the bolts and it just comes out like that. And that's diverting air that's collected under the front of the car and blowing it onto the rotor. Now this has cast iron rotors. The uh, car can be fitted with ceramic rotors and they require a little extra cooling. So that's why this particular uh, air fence is mounted to the lower arm. But I've taken it off so we can see what we're looking at. Here we can see our two forward links. This one goes to the front and it basically braces the wheel in the fore-aft direction. This one is more lateral and it braces the cornering loads more. And it has a pivot here and the forward link pivots here. Now why do this? Why have two pivots? Well, because you really want to have your pivot point out in this area, but there's a brake rotor here, physically impossible. So this dual pivot arrangement allows you to create a virtual pivot, which is basically at the intersection between the line that goes from here to here, extend it out this way, and from here to here, extend that out this way, and you get something in this neighborhood, which is favorable for this particular car because they want to get the steering axis close to the center of the hub, the center of the wheel, because this is a car that has electric motors up front, 
that can add considerable torque and you don't want to have torque steer and you want to have nice precise steering in the face of uh, electric motor either adding torque or subtracting it during regenerative braking or during torque vectoring. So in order to make sure that the car responds smoothly and predictably and there's no kickback uh, during any of those types of events, they need that pivot out here. But of course, there's a brake rotor and they need the brake rotor, obviously. And these are both forged, as is this. This is a casting. The knuckle here that it all attaches to is cast aluminum. This is the ball joint, the rearmost of the two lower ball joints in the front suspension. And this is the lateral link. And the spring shock assembly bolts here. The fork envelops the drive axle and the link itself and mounts here at about, looks like 75% out from the pivot point. So that's our motion ratio up here. So this is the inner pivot attachment point for the front lateral arm at the bottom. And you can see this little device here, and that's a shim. There's one on the other side too. And the shims are there to make alignment adjustments. This is the stabilizer bar, and you can see that its link connects to the upper control arm, which is unusual. It's about halfway out, maybe a little further um, from the pivot point to the ball joint. This car uses a brake-by-wire system, and you can see it's sitting here sideways under the hood. And that is a stepper motor there. So sometimes when you put on the brakes, it's wanting to regenerate using the motors rather than waste uh, that energy as heat in the pads and rotors. And so what goes on is the brake pedal is attached to a different hydraulic cylinder that we can't see. And there's a pressure sensor attached to that along with a position sensor for the brake pedal that looks at the amount and speed at which you apply it. And then a computer does some math and decides whether it can use regenerative braking or hydraulic braking, which is then dished out here through this electronically controlled master cylinder. And they've done an excellent job because you can't tell any of that is going on. Here we have a six piston fixed caliper, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can remove the pads pretty easily through this window, but you do have to remove this bridge bolt first that gives this caliper extra stiffness. Uh, but once you do that, then it's just these two pins, pads come out. This car has the standard steel rotors. You can get ceramic as an option. In both cases, it's a two-piece design with an aluminum hat and these isolators to uh, prevent any dimensional changes from feeding back into the car as vibration. Interestingly, and uh, somebody else pointed this out to me, there's a little lip molded here into uh, this part of the hub so that when you're hanging the wheel on here and you haven't got the bolts in there yet, uh, it'll kind of grab onto this and it will stay on a little better and give you a little help before you try to put a bolt in so you don't drop it. This tire is a 245-35ZR19 and the rim is eight and a half inches wide. Anyway, let's see what one of these things weighs. Of course, this is the front. The rear will have its own weight. Good start. I can lift it up easily. 42 pounds even. Well, that's about it for the front. I'm going to put the tire on and move to the back. There's got to be a better way to do this. Well, that's unusual. We have two brakes, but the really interesting stuff that I can see is hidden behind them. So let's zoom in closer. Lots of interesting stuff here. First and foremost is this forged aluminum upper control arm, which really catches your attention. But look how it's mounted. This is a cast aluminum piece, and these are set in the dog bones here, are set deep into it, which is really interesting. And you can see that this cast aluminum is welded to other members here and here to make up the chassis of the car. And of course, this is the linkage that feeds into a sensor that's mounted a little bit lower. And that's telling the computer the position of the suspension at any moment so that it can make decisions about what to do with the damping force. 
So here's the rear shock absorber. It's another magneto rheological damper like the front, and it's a coilover, of course, but the mount is way up in there, and uh, that's because this is a mid-engine car with high shoulders, so they have the room to move it up a little bit, and you'll see in a minute why they've done that and how they've taken advantage of it. So here's our upper control arm, and this is the shock mounting bolt, and you can see that it's you know, mounted above the drive axle. And uh, as we saw earlier, because this thing has, you know, big rear haunches, uh, they can put a pretty long spring and shock in there and still mount it up high like this. So it gives them room uh, to package everything. And then below here is the stabilizer bar link and they had to mount a bracket here to give it a place to live. But it's also mounted essentially directly to the knuckle. Down below, we can see there's a couple of links here, but these plastic guards are blocking our view. So I'm gonna take a moment to remove those and be back in a second. Ah, that's better. With the air deflectors out of the way, we can see a lot more. There are two links here. The forward one is uh, going to control the fore-aft location of the wheel, and the rear one here is going to define the camber angle and uh, take up all the cornering loads. This is really interesting. This is a source of air for the diverter that I removed and it is plumbed through the subframe itself. And the inlet's there. You can see there's a duct built into the floor of the car and there's one for the other side as well and that scoops up air and diverts it through that tube and uh, wow a lot of thought went into that well this is the rear link and how it attaches to the chassis and you can see there's a shim there it's purple coated this time that helps uh, get the camber where it needs to be and it's another dog bone mount and then there's a two-piece subframe which is interesting and here is the forward link's mounting point. It's pretty high up in there. The two inner pivots of these lower links trend upward towards the front. And if you drew an imaginary line through those two and extended it forward, and then did the same thing at the top, which cants down, the two would intersect. And that is a hint that there's quite a bit of anti-squat in this suspension. Here's another look at the lower lateral link. And this is the toe link that keeps the wheels pointed straight ahead. And of course, there's the adjuster. Here's another view of our tow link and its adjuster there. And you can just see where it attaches to the chassis deep inside there. So what we've got here is a multi-link suspension. The upper end is controlled by an A-arm, which does the job of two links. But down here, we have three discrete links. Finally, we can see the rear stabilizer bar. Pivot bushings in there and it curls around and picks up the link right there. Here's a look at the forward lower link with its air deflector back on. The lower lateral link has this scoop attached to it that shovels air up against the back side of the rotor. So as you might imagine, this is the main brake caliper and it's a four piston fixed caliper. Here's one, two, and there's two more on the back. Again, you'd pull the pins if you want to pull the pads. And these two bolts are what you would need to remove to take it off if you wanted to do anything with the rotor. But up here, of course, is a parking brake caliper. That's all that does. And this is electronically actuated and uh, holds the car quite firmly. Of course, just like the front, the rear uses two-piece rotors. And uh, you can see here how the hub and the rotor are attached to one another. It's time to see how much one of these rear 305 30 20 tires and 11 inch wheels weighs. Encouraging, I could lift it on pretty easily. 56 and a half pounds. That is not bad at all considering how much rubber there is here. Well, yeah, there was a lot of really cool stuff here. And you know what? It all works. This car is amazing to drive. So on that note, I'm going to put the tire and wheel back on and go drive it some more. If you like what you saw, remember to like, subscribe, 
share with your friends. And until next time, this is Dan Edmonds saying thanks for watching.